Hello everyone, welcome to Cohort 7's brief introduction to the topic of connectivism. Believe it or not, connectivism is over a decade old already, and today we'll briefly discuss what it is, its context for its formulation, and what it might mean for teaching and learning. With us today is AK, a fellow member of Cohort 7, who will give us the basics of connectivism. Hello AK, thank you for talking to us about connectivism. Hello Matthew, um, and thank you for the opportunity. So, connectivism. What is it? How would you describe it to someone who doesn't know anything about it? Well, uh, most simply, it is a theory which integrates digital communications within the arc of learning. Uh, it argues that modern digital media means that learning can happen in many different ways, uh, through different platforms, contexts, and modalities, in order to meet the need uh, of different learners in the digitally connected networked environment. Uh, Downs uh, further argues that at its heart, connectivism is the thesis that knowledge is, is distributed across a network of connections and therefore that learning consists of the ability to construct and traverse those networks. Interesting. So learning and knowledge are distributed across connections. How does that work? Well, uh, connectivism has certain central tenets. And those central principles are uh, that learning is uh, and knowledge rest in the diversity of opinions. Uh, learning is a process of connecting specialized nodes or information sources. Uh, learning may reside in non-human appliances. Uh, the capacity to know more is more critical than knowing what is currently known. Uh, nurturing and maintaining connections is needed in order to facilitate continual learning. Uh, the ability to see connections between fields, ideas, and concepts is a core skill. Uh, currency, that is, how accurate or up-to-date knowledge is, is the intent of all connectivist learning activities. And finally, decision-making is itself a learning process. Choosing what to learn and the meaning of incoming information is seen through a lens of a shifting reality. While there is a right answer right now, it may be wrong tomorrow due to the alterations in the information climate uh, affecting those decisions. Those are a lot of points to take in. Uh, let's break them down. If I heard you right, learning resides in non-human devices. Can you explain this point further? Uh, yeah. Um, it might help if I make an analogy to how ancient cultures transitioned from conveying information orally to using the written word. In addition to uh, being able to understand the content that is being conveyed by writing, it also became important to develop skills associated with literacy, such as reading and writing, especially, but also interpretation uh, and organizing uh, of that written information. So if you fast forward to today, the new media of our age is digital media. It's the Internet. This necessitates a new appraisal of the way one learns, uses, and accesses information using Web 2.0, and it's why connectivism is a learning theory for the digital age. Navigating learning in a digital age requires skills such as digital literacy. Finding and making use of the right kinds of uh, learning requires skills in judgment and decision-making. Uh, some important terms and notions to keep uh, in mind here are the notion of sense-making and wayfinding, which are described by Siemens, as well as the notion of learning as a network. You mentioned decision-making as one of the points of connectivism earlier. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about what is meant by uh, developing skills in decision-making and judgment? Well... The picture that we have is one in which knowledge is generated, shared, and accessed via a network of connected nodes. So a learner uh, or a human being is a node within a knowledge ecology, an environment uh, which is in which each member maintains uh, their own network. Uh, and each member added to a network adds to that total ecology and can draw upon the perspectives available from within uh, the network and its various actors. The perspective, uh, or rather this perspective, is called networked uh, learning as a network. It emphasizes the external nature of learning as characterized by the strength and diversity of connections to nodes within that network. Uh, so, according to Stephen Downs, uh, knowledge networks are characterized by four traits. 
So first, knowledge networks are diverse in their range of perspectives. Uh, second, individuals within the network should have an autonomy as actors utilizing and contributing to that network. Third, these networks are interactive. Members of a network produce knowledge as a result of their interactions and their relationships with one another. And finally, they exhibit openness. And openness is defined as a mechanism that allows a given perspective to be entered into the system, to be heard, and to be interacted with by others. So my next question is, where does connectivism come from? And why do we even need a new learning theory? So uh, George Siemens, uh, back in 2005, famously described connectivism as a learning theory for the digital age. This reflects in some advances in communication and social networks that have developed in recent decades, uh, which really drive the need for a new theory. Uh, there are two points here. First, the ubiquity of the Internet means that we have many more connections to information and to each other than ever, than ever before. Uh, so, indeed, anybody with a smartphone, a tablet, a computer uh, can access more information than any one person uh, can potentially access at any time. Second, the tools that we use shape the way that we learn and access information. So, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, this is similar to the development of writing in uh, various ancient cultures. Uh, this also means that learning takes place in many different ways, from looking up on how to perform DIY house repairs, to taking formal online classes, to updating your skills through informal learning in MOOCs. Um, and this also means that a significant component of what we know is actually having the means to access knowledge necessary uh, for us. All right, let me push back a little bit on that last point. Wouldn't an implication of connectivism be that students don't need to learn the material, but simply know where to go to copy and paste content, in effect to plagiarize material that they already find? So I think that is a potential criticism for connectivism, but I think it really misses the point of the theory, what makes connectivism a learning theory as opposed to just a simple description of how people use the Internet. Uh, the point is not to simply to be able to connect to those sources of information and just take it uh, as is, but to have the judgment to use them appropriately and, in this case, uh, finding good sources of information and citing them appropriately. We've been talking about connectivism as a learning theory. Uh, how does it differ from other previous learning theories, such as constructivism or, con or cognitivism? So uh, we've seen uh, an evolution in how uh, we understand the nature of learning in human beings. Uh, technology has an impact on how we live and work, and most certainly uh, in the ways that we learn. Uh, as you can see from this table, uh, which is borrowed from Siemens's work, Connectivism is an evolution uh, from uh, previous ways in which we understood learning. Uh, connectivism isn't necessarily radically new and different, but rather it exists on the spectrum with the other learning theories. So, uh, for example, when we think of how knowledge transfer works, uh, in connectivism, uh, it's thought that uh, connecting uh, to new nodes is the way that uh, knowledge transfer occurs. This other learning theory, constructivism, where the learner is socialized into a discipline by connecting to specialized nodes in their environment, and those specialized nodes would be the teachers. However, unlike, let's say, cognitivism, connectivism uh, sees the learner as not needing to duplicate the knowledge uh, of that other knower. Um, again, to use the example of a student plagiarizing the paper, the point is that technology enables the learner to develop and contribute their own opinions. We need to consider the implications of connectivism for teaching, learning, and instructional design. How does the theory of connectivism shape instruction and in how we make use of learning? So uh, connectivism sees learning as occurring in the network and it places an emphasis not on what is known today, but rather what needs to be learned for future situations and how learners would navigate uh, those networks in order to obtain the knowledge that they ultimately need to be able to act. 
In this respect, connectivism places a critical emphasis uh, on many different aspects of learning, uh, including, I would argue, uh, the need for digital literacies, critical literacies, lifelong learning, hutagogy, and a leaning on the learner's self-determination to continue learning and to persevere on their own. Uh, in this sense, connectivism, I would argue, can be thought of as an extension to andragogy in that learners are placed in the driver's seat of their own educational endeavors. So wouldn't an implication of what you're saying be that some learners would have to learn digital literacy skills? Can, can we imagine online learning as including learning objects on digital literacy in addition to whatever content is being taught? And for that matter, would this help learners orient themselves to learning in more and diverse ways online in the future? Yes. Uh, so without the requisite literacies uh, for the learner to be able to bootstrap themselves into an environment where they navigate their uh, learning network uh, successfully in that sense uh, to learn what they need to learn, connectivism doesn't really work. Connectivism really shines when learners have those requisite skills and literacies and they're able to adeptly traverse those, those nodes, uh, those connections to those nodes so that they can get the information that they seek. Uh, and then they can critically analyze that information and apply it to whatever context uh, is meaningful to them. That said, the course based on the principle of connectivism would need to build up the learner's skills, literacies, and motivations for lifelong learning in the network environment. Um, connectivism also impacts uh, the creation of materials. Given that connectivism sees learning as uh, potentially happening outside of the learner themselves in non-human appliances, the development of OER, open education, means that completed OER can become a node in the learner's network, a node which can be accessed by the learner through their own personal learning network in order to solve their immediate problems they're facing. Um, so open educational resources can be single items, uh, such as uh, some sort of uh, digital literacy uh, OER. They can be various collections, uh, such as an open courseware cor uh, course materials uh, where um, a whole collection uh, on uh, how learners can become digital literate themselves um, uh, can exist. Uh, there can be massive open online courses, which uh, can be a little more structured and provide uh, an additional network for learners to be a part in. And then that can contribute to learners either bootstrapping themselves into learning um, uh, the skills of critical literacy to be able to be successful in the connectivist environment. So, in that case, would this digital presentation also be an example of connectivism at work? As an example of learning existing outside the learner and existing, at least partially, in devices. That's right. I would say that this... Um uh, this interview, uh, it could be an example of an open educational resource that could be plugged in uh, into a uh, learner's personal learning network in order to learn more or at least get introduced to the topic of connectivism and then looking at additional resources, they can go through and navigate um, their own uh, PLN uh, to learn more about the topic. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to talk to us. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Uh, this will conclude our formal presentation. I would like to direct everyone to make use of our links at the end to learn more about connectivism, including some of the original papers which define this theory. And in the interest of making use of this idea that knowledge resides in a diversity of opinions, I would like to direct everyone to the discussion forums. Uh, we have some suggested topics for further reflection there, such as the issue of connectivism as a learning theory, as well as what it means to have learning reside at least partially in our devices and in our connections with others. Thank you.